All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving another example on flux integrals. In this case, we're given the following vector field. So it's y, x, z. And we're given a surface that is actually the connection of two surfaces. So we have the first one, which is a paraboloid, which is concave down. And it is described by the equation 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And then on the bottom, we have another surface, which is described by the plane set equals to 0. So now, the question is, how do we actually find the flux here? Well, what we can do is, we can find the flux across each surface individually, and then we just add the results together. Just in the same way that if we had a, a line integral that consisted of a curve of multiple curves, we would just do the line integral of each curve individually, and then add the results together. So for the first surface, which is the paraboloid, what we need to do is, we need to find a parametrization, so essentially a parametric surface. Now, the easiest way to do it in this case is we're given a function that is explicitly a function of x and y. So that means that x and y are independent variables here, and z is a function of x and y. So we can write everything in terms of x and y as the parameters. And now all we need to do is we're going to put the expression for z in here. So this is going to be our parametric surface. Now, the next step is going to be to find the derivatives. So we're going to have to differentiate the parametric surface with respect to x. So if we start here, we're going to have 1, then 0, and then this becomes minus 2x. And we do the same for y. So we're going to have 0 here, then 1 here, and then minus 2y. And then we're going to take the cross product of those two quantities. So we take a 3 by 3 determinant, arrange the terms in two rows, so now for the first element, we're going to have 0 times that, that's 0, minus minus 2x times 1, which becomes 2x, minus j component, and this is going to be 1 times that, so minus 2y, minus this times that, 0. And then for the kth component, we're going to have 1 times 1, minus 0. And then in the end, we can write our expression as 2x, 2y, and 1. Now, we need to take the dot product with respect to f, but in order to do that, we need to express f in terms of that parametrization as well. So whenever we see a set on, a, on f, we're going to have to replace it by this, which is the surface described here by s1. So set is just going to become this expression. So we have f equals to y, x, 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And then we're going to take the dot product. So this is the quantity. This is the scalar function that we're going to integrate. So we take the dot part of those two, so we're going to have y times that, 2xy, then this plus this times that, 2xy again, and then this times that, so we have this. We can group this term, and this term becomes 4xy, and then we have everything else. So this is the function we're going to integrate. So now we can write our flux integral for surface 1 as follows. We have this double integral, and we notice that the area here, so basically the region of integration on the xy plane, is actually a circle of radius 1. So it is more convenient to use polar coordinates to perform this integration. So what we can do is we can just change the variables to polar coordinates. Now we have the limits. This is going to be radius goes from 0 to 1. And then theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And then our element dA is going to be r dr d theta. So now what we can do is we can write the integral in terms of those. So we just make the substitutions in here. So we're going to get this expression here. Then for this quantity here, we have minus x squared plus y squared. So the cosine and the sine are just going to become 1. And then everything multiplied by r and then integrate with dr d theta. So now we multiply through by r just to rearrange the expression and we can perform our integration. So the first integration with respect to r, so we have r to the power 4 over 4, the 4 cancels out, so we're left with this. Then we have minus r to the power 4 on 4, and then we have plus r squared over 2. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Now we just put a 1 in there. So this is going to become 1 times this. And then we have 1 minus 1 over 4 plus half, so half minus one quarter is just going to be one quarter. So we're left with this integral here. Now for this particular thing here, we can use substitution. 
and we know that if we use substitution then we're just going to get half of sine squared of theta because if we differentiate that the 2 comes down cancels out with the 2 we're left with sine theta times cosine theta and then this is just going to be plus theta over 4 now because we're integrating from 0 to 2 pi this quantity here is going to be 0 in both cases so we can just get rid of it and then we're going to have 2 pi on 4 and then this becomes pi on 2 so this is going to be the flux integral across the surface S1. Now the next thing to do is to calculate the flux integral for the surface S2. So now here we need to be a little bit more careful. So if we look at the surface here, we notice that this is just a plane, so z equals to zero. The normal vector across this surface is always pointing downwards. So that means that it is going to be a constant vector rather than a vector function like we would normally have here. And the reason for this is that if you look at this paraboloid here, the normal vector to that surface actually changes at each point. So that's why we have this expression here, the cross product, which represents the normal vector going outwards at each point. Whereas here, on this surface, we just have a flat surface at z equals to zero which means that the normal vector is always going to be pointing directly downwards so we can just write the normal vector in this fashion and now because we know that ds is just represented by the normal vector and then the quantity ds so magnitude times direction then we can just take this quantity so the next thing to do is well we need to first of all we know that f is going to be y x and z and in this case, what we need to do is, we know z is equal to zero, that is essentially the function of x and y we have. We have y, x, zero. So now if we take the dot product of this vector field with respect to the normal vector, we're going to get the following. You're gonna have y, x, zero, dot product with zero, zero, minus one. So we have y times 0, 0, x times 0, 0, and then minus 1 times 0, which is 0. So it turns out that this whole thing is 0. But hang on a minute, if you integrate 0, then you're just going to get 0 for this surface. So in fact, the flux integral across surface 2 is just going to be 0. So if we go back to the beginning of the problem, we notice that we said, okay, so the total flux integral is just going to be the flux across surface 1 plus the uh, flux across surface 2. We found this flux to be equal to pi on 2. And this is equal to 0, so our final answer for the total flux on this surface is going to be pi on 2. So sometimes you can make simplifications like that if you're a little bit careful in the way that you define your surfaces. But in general, if you have a normal vector to a surface that is constant, you can usually take advantage of that to represent this as a normal vector so that you don't have to actually find a parametric surface like this and then do the whole cross product procedure. So sometimes there are simplifications that come in quite handy.